Welcome to this week's version of the Sixers Stock Report here on the PHLY Sixers Podcast presented by our good friends at Bagels & Co. who offer huge Brooklyn-style bagels made right here in Philadelphia. I tell you guys all the time, they offer a ton of different types of bagels, 15 to 20 at any given time, 30 different flavors of cream cheese, and premium coffee at a superior price to most national brands and chains. We are stock up. On Bagels and Co. at all times, they're going to the moon. All right, I gotta well, say, after a brief stock down on Kyle's intro, that one was a stock right, right back up, buddy. We didn't even second know second time it. was the charm. <laughs> didn't even know about it. Well, if you're new to our stock report, we just basically talk about the Sixers and who's having a good arrow pointing up or bad arrow pointing down. Stock up, stock down. Very, very easy here. And last week we did the NBA. We went around the league and threw some different topics at Kyle, at Derek to get their thoughts. And this week, we got to go back to the home team as we are now 16 games remaining on the season. They are 36 and 30 before they take the floor against the Charlotte Hornets on Saturday at home. They need a win, but before they pick up a win or another loss, let's talk about stock up, stock down. Let's begin with one Paul Reed coming off the bench as of late. Stock up, stock down for the Sixers. Backup big man. I'm giving him a stock up. I would assume that that's probably universal here. Yes. I I think. Stock up, but no victory tour. Yeah, no victory tour. But I think Paul has stabilized now that he's back in that role as the nightly backup. It is one of the only good things about Mo Bamba starting is that (laughs) Paul has responded to the challenge uh, of Mo being given what was for a while his spot in the starting lineup. I think the energy has been good. I think he's been, while he's certainly not the perfect disciplined offensive player, I think he's done a good job of balancing, taking the occasional open three or open jumper and playing within himself, playing within the offense, like moving the ball, swinging the ball, or just holding it for a second instead of like ball hits his hands, he's open fire away like there's been less of that and i think nick nurse and frankly his teammates have probably appreciated that and then the other end of the floor while he hasn't been perfect i do think the defense has been pretty good i think against Giannis in milwaukee on thursday night that was one of the better defensive games i think he's had lately where not only did he block Giannis a couple times at the rim which that in itself is impressive his timing was good, both on ball and off ball. Good weak side help. Kept his hands back so he wasn't in foul trouble throughout the game, which against Giannis, even Joel Embiid, who is great at not fouling while defending, he's gotten in foul trouble in games against Milwaukee before because of that. So you add all that up, I think Paul is in a good place. And hopefully, depending on when Joel gets back, he is, you know, trending upward in that role. And so when Joel comes back and he takes over and is playing, you know, 30 to 36 minutes a night, hopefully Paul will be primed for 15 strong minutes. And once Joel comes off the floor, it's like how you take your foot off the gas a little bit and he just yeah. comes in and hits you with that jolt of energy. Now, to your point, the jumper over the last two weeks, uh, so we're talking about eight games, seven of 12 from three point range. from the field. Low volume, but the shot has been going in. The mid-ranger has been going in deceptively much throughout most of the season. He's actually made those at a good rate. And he's at three stocks per game. Thought I'd bring in stocks since it is a stock report. Good call. 1.9 blocks, 1.1 steals to only one turnover per game. So as much as he can be out of control at times over the past two weeks, that has worked in their favor. Those shots have gone in. Those drives have worked. And he has played pretty active defensively. This has certainly been a pretty good stretch of play for him. I do think going back to the bench sort of um, refocused him a little bit and got him back to doing what he is is good at and what leads to success, Uh, and we will see if he can keep it up. It's like when one of us misses a show. You come back in, you're refocused because you see that you could be moved on without you and everyone would be okay. (laughs) Paul Reed, you have earned yourself a bagel, pregame bagel before the game. Stock up for you, my friend. That is not the way a goat would talk. Well, that is not goat talk at all. As Paul Reed, he might feel like he's a goat too. So, all right, let's go to the other side. I think when we throw in, we got to throw in the guy who took his starting spot, Mo Bamba. Stock up, stock down. For one, is it Mo Bamba or No Bamba? 
Uh, it's definitely no bomba. Well, it looks like it's no bomba stock down. But I, I almost it's tough to give him a stock down because the stock was already down. It's just the stock remains down. It can go lower. It yeah, can crash. but I mean, it was pretty low. It was pretty it's low. crashing. I guess since he got a promotion to starting lineup, that would have been a stock up, even if it was a nominal starting spot. So stock down based on that, sure. I think the fact that Kai Jones is coming here and potentially <laughs> going to play suggests the that the yeah. stock is down in the organization, if nowhere else. I will say, I mean, he's had at least some moments lately where I'm like, oh, Mo remembered that you have to try to try to impact a basketball game. And they're so fleeting. And it's like, man, if this guy could just get retain that focus for – 15 minutes a night he could have a long and productive nba career and instead it's you get these little pockets of you know he's dialed in he makes one three he blocks a shot and he's uh, talking trash and then all of a sudden he has to close out on a three-point shooter and it looks like me trying to sprint from the <laughs> rim to the it's you know that's the thing that i think was most obvious in that milwaukee game him against Brooke Lopez was so funny because Lopez was not moving most of the game. <laughs> and watching watching Bamba try to get out there on a closeout was it was something. I'll and Lopez, he's not he's not straddling that three point line anymore. Like he's no. bombing from 30, 31 feet away. Yeah, he's coming. A lot of ground to cover. Yeah, yeah, we were watching that and it was like, well, all right. Even though he's a few steps behind the three point line, the guy can shoot. You might want you might not want to let him get loose because he can hit six in the game. And, and pick up where maybe others uh, are not doing anything in that particular game. So, yeah, Mo Bamba stock down uh, for him. Let's go in another direction. No bagel for Mo Bamba. Let's see about this one because the guy's been inserted into, into the starting lineup. And even though he was, I don't think, brought in here to be this type of player, he's had to play more minutes. And that wasn't the role that we expected, even with guys being out. De'Anthony Melton came back, so with him, you felt like, all right, once he gets his legs underneath him, he'll be back in the starting lineup. Kyle Lowry has had to play a lot of minutes for Nick Nurse in the starting role. So where do we look at with Kyle Lowry? Stock up, stock down. I feel like <clears throat> trading sideways, maybe. I don't know yeah. if I... Is it more in the middle there? So I would Just say leave it's, it? it's down because he's being asked too much, but it's up because it's more than what I expected he had left. I'm going to... I would go with I, the I latter. think tentative stock yeah. up just because I do think once Joel is back, I'm more confident in Lowry in those multi-guard him and Tyrese type lineups than I would have been coming into this hasn't blown anybody away i think you see all the physical limitations he cannot get by people right like that's the real shame like i think in my head i was thinking of him as okay that's he's an upgrade on backup point guard like i that's how i looked at it coming in i'm not so sure he can really play backup point Certainly with Joel, where it's just give Joel the ball and space the floor around him, he can be the backup role in that situation. So it'll probably work out eventually. But when he's the solo ball handler, there is just very little chance of yeah. them being able to create downhill pressure. Him playing off of Maxi has been great because Maxi sucks in the attention. And then Lowry, when he already has an advantage, he's playing like four on three. That's when the connective passing and the shooting mm -hmm. and all that really comes to the forefront. So I'm up because of that, but I'm a little disappointed in how he's looked when it's just been him out there by himself. No, I, and I think the, the fit with Maxi is important because I think at, at some point, like Kyle might bring the ball up and you might run Maxi off ball like to start a possession, but then mm -hmm. Maxi is the one doing the creating. Maxi is the one trying to free himself off of screens off ball. So Kyle's limitations as a one on one playmaker don't really matter as much there. But you know, in terms of his value offensively, a lot of that's going to come down to um, is a shot going in. Like right now, two thirds of his shots are from three point range. That is uh, you know pretty descriptive of the fact that he can't get off the dribble like he used to. So if the shot's going in, and at times it has been, he has had some good games. From the perimeter, for sure, uh, the Brooklyn game, jumping out, he'll look real good. And he'll help with the ball movement, but there are certainly limitations. When you're playing 28, 29, 30 minutes per night, those limitations are going to come to the forefront. When you're playing 20 minutes per night alongside Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, he might be a more valuable role player. And that's why I go stock up also, because 
30 minutes a game is just entirely too much for Kyle Lowry at this stage of his career. It's not what he was brought here for. He's trying to do his best. He's only really had the one game where we collectively sat there and said, that was a terrible game, and that was against the Brooklyn Nets, where he got the technical against uh, yeah. Dennis Schroeder. He was just off his game that night after yeah. playing well against Dallas the game before, and then coming back against Memphis, uh, I think he had the night off because of the load management since he basically just returned from playing basketball for the first time since uh, he was traded to the Charlotte Hornets. So stock up, but again, just playing out of the role that they initially brought him in here to play, and, and hopefully if B does come back and maybe if Melton comes back, things will fall into place. We continue to talk about guys playing up a level for where they're supposed to be, and that's where things are right now. And to now. that point, Devon, one last thing on Lowry. I do think I, I'm i glad that they've treated him the way they have in terms of the, the load management and not playing him in back-to-backs because I think one of the big topics for us right after they got him was that – He's being brought in for the playoffs. Like yep. his most important role will be in the playoff rotation. And so you can't overtax him. I know he's playing at heavier minutes than maybe we expected, but by giving him days off and allowing his body to recover and not overstressing him with back to backs and things like that, the hope would be that that pays dividends later. So I, I think that's been a smart way to approach it, even though it's, it's hurting the team in the short term to an extent. Yep. All right. So you do get a bagel. You get a bagel from Bagels and Co. Stock up for Kyle Lowry. <laughs> final one. I think this is the final one that I'm going to throw at the guys here for this edition. He's the epitome of stock up, stock down with the waves that go. And that's one Kelly Oubre of where Kelly Oubre is going, where he is. He helps you get a win. <laughs> he, he plays poorly in the game against Milwaukee where you need him. So guys, Where's Kelly Oubre on the stock up? Stock down for one, Kelly Oubre. Derek might disagree, but I, I think we have to go stock up here. Stock I, up Oubre. And the glare on that, there we go. There you uh, go. Look at that. I got to find the perfect. So, admittedly, coming off a Milwaukee game where that was as bad as it gets offensively for Kelly, defensively there are some things you could probably salvage from that. But I'll say what I said on another show recently. I think I've come to appreciate the constant aggression and belief when you contrast it with how Tobias Harris has played and understanding that, yes, they do need volume scoring to some extent right now. Are there pieces of his game that drive me crazy that have impacted him during this recent run? Yes, the complete unwillingness to shoot a right-handed layup is just remarkable. Like He is a skilled <laughs> offensive player. And just will not shoot a right-handed layup. No. It is crazy how one-handed he is. He drives right. Like That's he can dribble right. The it's one not where like he he's... missed on Thursday at the rim, he drove right. He won't even attempt a dunk with his right hand. That's what I so like yeah. he can go right in the sense the that his right hand is useful to dribble. Yeah. But once he picks it up, it's like Forget that hand it. might as well be tied behind his back. Like it, it serves no purpose. But all that being said, I do think the constant rim attacks have been good. It has allowed him and the team to sustain the offense at the free throw line to a certain extent. I think he's had some good defensive performances this week and in recent weeks. Does he drive me crazy a decent amount of time? Sure. But he's been bought in. I think he has had the right attitude. Like He got moved to the bench for know periods of time as they shuffle through lineups and he responded to that well as Paul Reed did and it ended up giving a spark to the second unit so no real present day complaints with Ubre. my focus is always on like I just always feel like the bottom is going to drop out at any given oh, because time it is. Yeah. <laughs> well he's in a different place too from when the last time they played against Charlotte so he might go for 30 against his former team 30, 30 on, on 27 28 shots, shots. <laughs> yeah no is look, that his fault I don't know. They don't have anybody else here, Maxie. So uh, generally speaking, I agree with Kyle that they have needed someone to be aggressive, and he is one of the few on the team who are is willing to do that, and they need someone to try to create some offense. So that stretch where he was going, like the Dallas game, Brooklyn, Memphis, that stretch, I think they needed his aggressiveness. They didn't pull out wins during that stretch, but I think he helped keep some of those games close. The last three games have been a struggle. 
But my bigger concern is that when, you know, now that Tyrese Maxey's on his way back, when Joel Embiid comes back, that they he's still going to do the volume scoring thing that he's doing yeah. now without the realization that they need him to change his role. That's always my concern with Kelly. But overall, with what he's giving you now with all the players who are out, especially during that four-game stretch without Maxey, I will acquiesce to the stock up because of that reason. I think that I have no problem in the playoffs, to your point, if Harris is not bringing that and it's very clear that someone else has to step up, it's going to be between, we think, all of us, I'm sure, Buddy Hill and Kelly Oubre to take some of those shots. Someone has to do it. I I pray to whatever God everyone believes in that it's Buddy Hill taking the shots and not but it, Especially, But if it's not falling, <laughs> you know where it's going to go. and Then we'll they're see. screwed. You need a better decision maker and a playmaker to have that many um you and know. Kelly has had some good decision-making games. He actually had two in a row, I would say, which, listen, I, Derek is rolling his eyes and giving me a funny <laughs> look over there. But we do have to acknowledge when Kelly had four assists in back-to-back games and was broken clock, kind of cooking a little bit. A well, <laughs> well tw- can a broken clock be right twice in a week? Can he do it twice? <laughs> but only in, twice in a week. Can he do it twice in a series? I don't know. That's, I that's don't more know than that's a week. Can he do it twice in a series? in the postseason. That'll do it for this week's edition of our Sixers Stock Report. Stock up, stock down, presented by our good friends from Bagels & Co. So I just want to remind everybody, head to www.thebagelsandco.com slash store dash locator. You can find the closest Bagels & Co. near you. Got to do it, guys. We'll be back for our next edition next week. You never know where we may go. Who knows? It's March. We'll probably be in the studio. I don't know. It's March. We might go in a different direction. In the studio, though. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you guys next week. 